In this short video, I'd like to illustrate how a user could create a custom component based on some existing content center data to reduce the size of a pipe. So what I have done here, just to illustrate a couple of things, one that you can have a run with multiple routes in it with an inventor tube and pipe, and we can also customize a component. So I'm, kind of took a swag at it so you know I'd obviously have to see how this worked a little bit more but um, I'm going to show you how we can take a, uh, a NOLET here and we can create a custom size for it so what I've got going on is I've got some pipe here and I want to be able to take a tenant section and then reduce it with an outlet down to an 8 inch section of pipe so to do that and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the visibility here. Or, yeah, turn off the visibility of run one. But I created run two. And so in run two, what we've got is we've got one route, which happens to be the straight line segment for the 10 inch. And then after that, added in my fitting. And then because the fitting is a reducing OLED. I can come in here and I can look at route 4 which is now the section for the 8 inch pipe. So again you want to think of runs as performing some function within your piping system typically and then you can have multiple routes and the trick with Inventor Tube and Pipe is that each route uh, can be a different style. So if I'm going to change say pipe diameter or material or something like that I, I actually have to create a new style and so you theoretically could have runs where you've got rigid piping like this and then at an outlet you have flexible hose for example and that's completely cool if that's a some sort of a coolant run and you've got a large supply of coolant coming in but then when it gets to the individual elements you've got precise hoses going to each component so that's an example of how multiple routes can work within a run. Now, to show how I did the sock, uh, or I'm sorry, the welded OLED, and yeah, it's not perfect, but that's okay. We can fix that in the family table at some point. Instead of trying to create your own components, sometimes it's just easier to use the components that Inventor automatically provides for you in the environment, and then you can tailor them more to your liking. So. To do that, you have to create a custom Inventor Content Center library. So I'm assuming most people know how to do that. If not, you know, fire out a comment or reach out and I'll be happy to show you how to do that. But once you've got a custom library configured within your project, you can just come up here to the editor. And so what I did was I had looked at a particular family that I wanted in the tube and pipe environment in this case it was a fitting it was a branch and it was one of the butt welded branches and I found just the weld OLED just a reducing standard weight nothing different there and so if I right click on this I can copy it to my library and what happens is it will copy that family table and it will also copy the family structure over to your own library. And so if I look at the My Library, there's tube and pipe fittings, branches, aha, there's the butt welded. And so from there, I just edit that table. So if I click on the Edit Family Table, or I click on the Family Table, these are all the standard sizes that it came with, bring that more into the view. And I had found out that about the biggest size that I wanted here was a four by six and there was no row 49 it just easily went from a 4 to 6 or a 5 to 6 uh, weld it. so what I did was I just right click added a row and then I began to populate it with different pieces of information so clearly I have to make sure that my sizing is correct for example my hole diameter at 8.5 is probably way too big so if I make that, I don't know, maybe seven, we can make changes here and then we'll see it update into our table. So again, that's what you would do just like normal content center editing. And so we do that, go ahead and make as many rows as you like. 
You can also export this and edit it via a spreadsheet. I recommend that if you're going to be doing lots of changes. I click OK. I click Done. And now we're back into the assembly. Now I may have to refresh the assembly. We'll have to take a look at that. I'll, re I'll finish the route here. And so I'll click on the refresh. Oh, I guess I didn't save this in a little bit. Well, my goodness. So I'll have to go back to the top level assembly here. We'll click save. That's fantastic. <clears throat> and then we'll dive right back down into the run. And then let's refresh. So this, uh, because I changed the hole size just to show you how that would work, I can refresh that. We'll let it grind away. Hopefully that works. I didn't actually check the sizing, so. There we go. So it didn't fix the hole, but you know that would be how we could make an edit, and then I could choose to update. Oh, there we go. I just had to hit the update button. That looks a little better. Again, I could still play with some of those dimensions, but that's how you could add um, custom dimensions to, in this case, a weld OLED, and yeah, customize the existing content center more to your liking. Will probably save you time versus trying to publish from scratch. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, please leave any comments or reach out with questions, and have a blessed day.